Well, Maryland falls to Ohio State and fell hard, 62 to 14. This is the Viner Consulting Post Game Show. This is Wayne Viner. That is Mason, the intern. Mason, did anything good come out of today's game? I guess you have to say the fact that the score was 20 to 7 for an extended period of time was a good thing. Other than that, a lot of the same that we saw last year. And a lot of the same was that Maryland couldn't compete in almost any phase of the game for most of the game. But for a while, at the beginning, even though it was a horrible start, Maryland had several chances at 20 to 7 to make it 20 to 14 or 20 to 10 and couldn't do anything on offense. I was surprised that they stuck with Max that long. Well, once you got to see Caleb Henderson, you didn't see a lot. Well, he got in because Max got injured, and no, you didn't see much there, but it was slightly better, slightly better, in my opinion, than what we got with Max. I think a 20 to 7, well, you got a, Ty Johnson has a kickoff return. Maryland blocks a field goal and gets a turnover where uh, Isaiah Davis held up the runner. Josh Woods knocks the ball loose. And then trailing the play from 20 yards behind, Chandler Burkett, who also blocked the field goal, gets the fumble recovery. It was a good sequence, and you were looking right there. Maryland had to do something, and they're back in the game. Were they going to win the game? No. But not having a quarterback who looked like he belonged on the field was a problem. Yeah, it's it's not something that you want to see when – you don't have a quarterback that looks like they should be out there when you at one point did. At, at two points. With Piggy and Kasim. you had a shot. This is going to be a tough year. I don't think we can play up to the higher division at this point with what we have. You need some leadership from the quarterback position. Other positives, look, Carter looked like he could play. Josh Woods had a bunch of tackles, although he missed that one that would have been a pick six and missed the ball that could have been a pick six. He just, as always, just he's not at that level. Nobody, There's still a lot of holes in this team, whether it be the D-line, even though they're fifth-year seniors, most of them at this point, they look pretty good. But in the secondary, you're still, you need the four-star and five-star talent to compete with the four-star and five-star receivers. Other teams come in there and compete, or at least stay in the game with Ohio State. I'm disappointed that we couldn't. We're just not used to it. Well, we got to get used to it soon. All right, so that's enough of the bashing on the good side. Uh, Ty Johnson still looks terrific, and that's about it for the offense. We've had two top 20 recruiting classes in the past God knows how long. One of them's on the field. One of them is uh, still coming in. I mean, they've got commits coming in February, and it's going to take a while to actually build this. I think we've got a a year or so still to go before we really compete, but I thought we'd be closer than 62-14. Who could have foreseen that we would have about zero from the quarterback position today? And yes, if we got anything there, it would have made a difference. No, probably not going to win the game, but would have made a difference. I just don't see how you can really say that. I mean, the team just looked let down after a few of those offensive possessions. That's, well, that's why I'm saying it. They look, look, if you got one or two first downs and got a field goal, it's 24 to 10, you're in the game. And sure, you might lose 42 to 17, but it's not 62 to 14. But from playing a lot of sports, at some point at 20 to 7, 20 to 7, 20 to 7, they looked at each other and said, we're not going to get a first down today. It's not, we're not going to get a first down this drive. We might not get one all day. And it's hard to play when you're faced with that. Yeah, but the alignment just, it was just disappointing. Brendan Moore just was continuously pushed back into Ty Johnson. And when you run the ball out of any formation, you can't blame this on the shotgun formation. You got linemen being pushed back into the running back. It looked like, were- after a certain point, a replay of the UCF game. And that's what happened offensively. We could not throw the ball. There were eight guys in the box. They knew we were going to run at every play, and we couldn't run it. But, hey, there's still our guys. we got Northwestern coming up next Saturday at uh, 3.30 on ESPN2. I expect that we're going to come out and see the good side of the Terps.
I, I still think we're going to win the game. Mason's shaking his head no, but we'll leave that for next week. You saw Maryland lacrosse against Team USA last night for a bit. What would you think of that? What an impressive performance on the good side of Maryland sports. Maryland loses really late against Team USA, 10-9. to Killed him on ground balls. Connor Kelly looked really good. He looked like he belonged out there. He is a member of that Team USA team, but he plays for the turf, so he was dressed in the Maryland colors. Jared Bernhardt now moved down to attack. He looks fantastic. If Paul Raybould, the best lacrosse player in the world at this point, wasn't out there, Maryland might have won this game. All right, Bubba Fairman's been a big hit on our Turp Talk videos. How'd Bubba play in his first action in a Maryland uniform? Yeah, Bubba, a true freshman, getting out there in fall ball and got the start at attack. He's the new number two on this team, taking over Colin Heacock's spot. He looked good. It's his first action with the rest of the Maryland team. It's just going to be an interesting year. I think if teams over play Connor Kelly, Jared Bernhardt will just destroy them. And that'll do it for our Ohio State Maryland wrap up and Team USA versus Maryland wrap up. This has been the Viner Consulting post game show for all of your IT needs networking, point of sale, accounting systems, websites. Call Viner Consulting at 301 251 2900. Mason, thanks for being on. We will see you on the Young Turp podcast on Sunday evening. Thanks and go Turps.